Hello, my name is Bruce of Elam.org and Risk Management Framework. And today I want to give you an introduction into selecting security controls. Now this is in relation to the Risk Management Framework. And if you watched my last video, you'll know that it's six steps. We already talked about categorization of the system in another video. We did an introduction to that. The next step after categorization is selecting the controls. And then after this, it's implementing the controls and then it's assessing the controls, authorizing controls, and then finally, continuous monitoring of the controls. But we're going to focus on an intro to selecting the security controls. So first of all, you can find all the stuff that I'm talking about in NIST Special Publication 800-37. And you can find additional information on all the individual controls in NIST Special Publication 853. Let's take a look at all the families that we have of controls. As you can see, we've got technical controls, we've got management controls, we've got operational controls, we've got lots and lots of different controls. As a matter of fact, we have over 500 controls in total. How do we know which of these security controls, of these hundreds of controls, to put on our system? How do you select out of all those hundreds of different NIST level risk management controls, how do you select the right one? There's actually three things that we have to do in this step. Three main things. There's lots of other things that go into it, but there's three main steps, tasks that we have to do in order to call this selection of controls complete. So how we determine that is categorization of the controls. The security categorization will give us what's called a baseline that we can go by. And if you go to the NIST SP 800-53, it'll have a baseline for a low, moderate, or high system. So these right out the box, you'll, you'll know what, whether you need to implement the low, moderate, or high controls for that particular system. That's the baseline. But you got to take it a step further in this first task because we have to know what common controls to implement, what specific controls to implement, and what hybrid controls to implement. So what are the differences between these three? Well, common controls are inheritable controls from the organization as a whole. So let's say that our organization has a physically secure building. And so every time we bring a new server or a new computer into that system, that system inherits all the physical security that's already surrounding if there's fencing, lighting, a security unit, biometrics, all of those things are already there. So that system, that server, our web server will actually inherit all those physical security controls. So system specific controls are owned by the information system owner. And so these are not inheritable but they have to be put on the system. An example of this might be uh, AU controls. So AU controls are not automatically inherited by the organization. That's something that you have to implement on that specific system, whether it's a Linux system, a Red Hat system, um, a Windows system, a Mac system. AU controls have to do with uh, audit logs. You have to turn that on, you have to configure that. And so it's not automatically inherited. You've got to log into the system and then you've got to turn that feature on. Now a hybrid control is really, it's a mixture of system specific controls and inheritable controls. And as an example of that would be maybe I, IR controls which have to do with um, incident response. Because the organization might have a security operations team that monitors all the logs. But they can't monitor logs in, if the system's not, if the logs aren't turned on, if the event logs aren't turned on. So that's a hybrid because it's one part's owned by the information system owner and the other part's owned by the, the overall organization because they have the team that actually analyzes all those controls. So that's a hybrid control. So now that we've established what controls we have, let's say we have about 100 controls on our web server dot, uh, public system. The next step that we have to do is we have to document these controls. How do we do that? We do that in what's called a system security plan. Now this is a very big piece here and this is the first time I'm talking about it on the video 
but it's a very big piece of this whole thing. You want to see the format of the system security plan, and I'll talk about this in another video. But if you want to know more about it, you can go to NIST Special Publication 800-18, and it breaks down all the things that are supposed to go into a system security plan. Now, once we have documented all of those security controls in the system security plan, we want to get that authorized. And the reason why it has to be reviewed and authorized by a higher level of authority, um, maybe by the authorizing official's office, is that there might be some controls that we couldn't put on there. There might be some controls that if we put that control there, it's going to break our system. So now we've got to go and tell them, tell our upper level management, hey, this control couldn't be applied and here's why. So we're asking you, we're, we're suggesting that you accept the risk for this. Otherwise, this is going to break the system. Or we have mitigated, we have reduced the risk of this particular control. Even though this control is not fully implemented, we've, we've mitigated the risk on this. Like, for example, to give you an example, would be uh, maybe our web server, we couldn't use the smart card feature on it. And that's one of the common controls, and they're really upset that we couldn't use that common because it's an appliance, whatever. There's some reason why we couldn't use it technically or it's going to break the system. Well, the vendor that we got the system from doesn't allow you to do smart cards. So we have to suggest that the authorizing official uh, accept the risk for that system. Now, they might say, no, we're not going to accept that risk. We want a system that has the smart card feature. Otherwise, we're not going to use that appliance. And if that's the case, it's back to the drawing board. Now we got to get another technology to uh, fix that uh, risk. And there might be something where we can't use a smart card, but hey, authorizing official, we can use this, this RA token. This RA token is um, still two-factor authentication, so we've just mitigated, we've reduced the risk here. And that's why after you've established the controls you have, you've documented them, they have to be reviewed and authorized by an authorizing official because there's a lot of risk and there's a lot of things that, to consider. So everybody has to be on the same page um, before you go forward with the next step, which is implementation. You don't want to implement something that was not approved. And we're going to talk about implementation in another video.